Sega Mega Drive Ball or Super Suta Rita Fighter 2 Shigashi Sarewe Nanika Yodesuka Sotoshi Itemimashu If you were a fan of Street Fighter 2 back in the day, then Super Street Fighter 2 would widen your eyes. In the arcades, I remember seeing this intro screen and being blown away of how impressive this looked. But is there that much to get excited about? These games are hard to improve on because it's a standard one-on-one -on -one fighting game and big improvements have to be made to get people interested. You get four new fighters and they are Kami, T-Hawk, Fei Long and DJ. Kami is a special forces agent with a pass connecting to Bison. I recommend watching the Street Fighter 2 movie for a backstory. And I mean the manga film, not the shitty live action Street Fighter. T-Hawk is a Mexican warrior who also has a vendetta against Bison. Fei Long is a movie star who wants to use his skills for real. Yes, he's just a Bruce Lee ripoff. And there's DJ, a kickboxing musician from Jamaica. Personally, I never use any of these characters, as I find them hard to use. Mainly because I grew up using Ken or Ryu, so I was used to their moveset. Kami controls quite well with similar controls to Ryu. Not a bad character and probably the easiest of the four to control. T-Hawk is a big lump just like Zangief and I found impossible to get anywhere with him. He moves too slow and his special attacks are a pain in the ass. Like most characters, their special moves are either vertical or horizontal. But his are diagonal which means your timing has to be precise to get a successful hit in. Fei Long is a quick character with vertical and horizontal moves, but only two to play with here, and they aren't that impressive. DJ is a mid-range character with similar special control inputs as Guile. Not a bad character overall, but not one I'd go back to. All the other characters from previous games are here with minor upgrades. Ken's Dragon Punch has fire when he attacks, and Ryu can perform an orange fireball in his Hadouken. Zangief has the Atomic Buster and Bison has a Devil's Reverse. What looks really nice is the upgraded avatars of the fighters. They have gone from okay to fierce. Even the beaten faces look ten times better. The stage scenery hasn't changed much and the new stages have been toned down a bit compared to the arcade. Kami's stage hasn't got much details in the northern lights. E Honda's stage doesn't have flowing water and parallax effects have been removed in some stages. The music is okay and sound effects are just as bad as Champion Edition. Guile has a new Sonic Boom vocal which doesn't sound right. The sounds of Ryu and Ken's special attacks sound as broken as before. There are custom ROM patches out there for anyone who wants to listen to how it should sound, and graphical enhancements so it's not as painful on the eyes. As for controls, I found them to be fine, but if you're still using the 3 button pad, then you're going to have some fun using the start button to switch between punch and kick. This also becomes a bastard when you need to pause it, and you can't. There are other modes you can play such as tournament, challenge, versus and group. I really didn't see the point in any of these additional modes other than versus, unless you have loads of friends around. It's only a point scoring challenge or elimination matches that I don't remember anyone talking about when this was released. This isn't a bad game for the Mega Drive, but I do think they cut corners. It's been proved that better sound and visuals were possible, and maybe if they focused on that instead of the extra content, it could have been a better game. The Super Nintendo stood above the Mega Drive versions previously and still does with this game. If it's a decent version you're after, then I'd recommend the Arcade Edition which can be found on the 30th Anniversary Collection for Modern Systems. Round two, fight. 